Hello Year 12s and welcome to this video in which we look at the final three factors that affect the ability of the courts to make law. These are the costs and time in bringing a case to court and the requirement for standing. There are four things that you need to do while you're watching this video. First, take the very best Cornell notes that you can. Second, use the pause and rewind functions. Use the pause function if you need to stop this video to take notes. Use the rewind function if you need to go over any information contained in this video. The third thing that you need to do is have your summary books open in front of you. As we go through this video, I will give you some guidance as to what you should include in your summary books. And the fourth thing that you need to do is have your vocabulary sheets open in front of you so that you can write into your vocabulary sheets the definitions of key terms and the meanings of other words that you may be unfamiliar with. Once you've finished watching this video, please read the sections from the textbook referred to on this slide. And if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then supplement your Cornell notes with that additional information. This is the third in a series of three videos about the factors that affect the ability of courts to make law. I've listed the factors that we'll be looking at in these three videos on this slide. In this video, we are looking at the costs and time in bringing a case to court and the requirement for standing. Accordingly, your learning intention for this video is that you should be able to discuss how the costs and time in bringing a case to court and how the requirement for standing affect the ability of courts to make law. Make sure that you write this learning intention down in your Cornell notes. Our learning intention for this video requires you to be able to discuss how the costs and time in bringing a case to court affect the ability of courts to make law. Well, the fact that it takes money and time to bring a case to court does not really contribute to the ability of the courts to make law. Instead, the fact that it takes both money and time to bring a case to court detracts from the ability of the courts to make law. And this is what is explained in the table on this slide. In the left-hand column, I've set out how costs in bringing a case to court detract from the ability of courts to make law. And in the right-hand column, I've set out how the time in bringing a case to court detracts from the ability of courts to make law. Please include this table in your summary books. And as you listen to the discussion which follows, make such additional notes on the table as you think will help you to better explain the points made in this table. Turning first of all to the costs in bringing a case to court. As you know, courts can't make law about an issue unless a case raising that issue is brought to the court. And it costs money to bring a case to court, particularly if the case is then taken on appeal to a higher court because one of the parties is dissatisfied with the decision on that case that is made by a lower court. Indeed, the fact that it costs money to bring a case to court may discourage a party from bringing a case in the first place, which means that a court will not then have the opportunity to make law about the case. In some cases, a party might be able to obtain legal aid, but as you know, legal aid is very limited. In Unit 3, we saw that legal aid is generally only available to a person who satisfies both the means and merits tests. The means test requires that the person must have a net weekly income of less than $360 and net assets of less than $1,095. The merits test requires that the person's case must have a reasonable chance of succeeding. Only about 8% of households would satisfy the means test, which leaves a lot of people in the missing middle who can't afford a lawyer to represent them, but also who don't qualify for legal aid. And while legal aid is available for most types of criminal cases, it is only available for limited types of civil cases, mainly family law cases. The most significant cost in bringing a case to court is the costs of legal representation. 
In Unit 3, we saw that a party generally needs to employ both a solicitor to provide legal advice and a barrister to represent the party in court, and that the total legal fees for a case depended upon factors such as the complexity of the case, the court hearing the case, the size of the case, the length of the legal proceedings, the experience of the lawyers involved in the case, and the importance of the case. Insofar as civil cases are concerned, the Productivity Commission in its 2014 Access to Justice report estimated that the average plaintiff spent $60,000 in legal costs on a civil dispute in the Victorian Supreme Court. And of course, in a civil dispute, there is the added risk that the court will generally make an adverse costs order against the losing party, which requires the losing party to pay the legal costs of the winning party as well as their own legal costs. In addition to these costs, in a civil case, the plaintiff will have to pay court fees. These fees include filing fees to initiate the civil claim, a daily hearing fee, and if the plaintiff wants a jury to hear the case, a daily jury fee. On top of this, there may also be mediation fees where the parties are ordered uh, to try to resolve their civil dispute by mediation before the case is set down for trial and expert witness fees. The time it takes to bring a case to court can also discourage a party from bringing a case to court, which can detract from the ability of the courts to make law. Again, this is because a court can't make law about an issue unless a case raising that issue is brought to the court. And it can take time for a court to decide a case. It can be particularly time consuming if the case is taken on appeal to a higher court because one of the parties is dissatisfied with the decision on that case that is made by a lower court. In such a case, it takes time not only for the case to be prepared for and heard by the lower court, but also for the case to be prepared for and heard by the appeal court. As with costs, the fact that it takes time to prepare a court case, that it takes time for the parties to argue the case before a court, and that it takes time for the court to decide the case, may discourage a party from bringing a case in the first place, which means that a court will not have the opportunity to make law about that case. There are a number of time delays associated with court cases. First, it takes time to prepare a case for a court hearing. The lawyers have to take instructions from their clients, interview witnesses, collect and consider documents and other relevant evidence, and prepare written submissions for the court. Second, there will be delays in the court hearing the case because of backlogs caused by the courts having to deal with earlier cases before they can hear newer cases. Third, there will be pre-trial procedures. In a criminal case, there will be committal proceedings in the magistrate's court where the offence is an indictable offence, and in a civil case, there will be civil pre-trial procedures such as pleadings, discovery of documents, and exchange of evidence that the parties have to follow. Fourth, particularly where the case is complex, it might take a long time for the judge to hear the case and then to write their judgment. And fifth and finally, if a party is dissatisfied with the outcome of the case and decides to appeal the case to a higher court, then there is all the time that is taken up with preparing the case for appeal, waiting for the appeal court to hear the case, presenting the case, and waiting for the appeal court to write its judgment. Until this has been done, the case will not have been finally resolved. In urgent cases, it is possible to get a case decided quickly by a court, but this will be the exception rather than the rule. Our learning intention for this video also requires you to be able to discuss how the requirement for standing affects the ability of courts to make law. As you know, a party must have standing, also referred to as locus standi, to bring a case before a court. The requirement for a party to have standing means that the party must be directly affected by the issue raised by the case. Look down the left hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term standing and write this definition in there. 
Once you've done that, please highlight the words in red, bold, italicized type. And if you're ever required to describe the requirement for standing, make sure that you include these highlighted words in your description. As described in the table on this slide, which you should include in your summary books, the requirement for standing detracts from the ability of courts to make law. This is because courts can't make law about an issue unless a case raising that issue is brought to the court. However, only a party with standing, that is, only a party who's directly affected by the issue, can bring such a case. If a party with standing is not prepared to bring the case, then a court can't make law about the issue. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. As a result of watching and taking notes on this video, you should now be able to discuss how the costs and time in bringing a case to court and how the requirement for standing affect the ability of courts to make law. Don't forget to read the pages from the textbook referred to on the first slide. And if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then supplement your Cornell notes with that additional information. Thank you for your attention.